All right. I think we're going to be happy to see this one. Um, it, the author actually left us a note for this particular question that says, Feynman was fond of saying, you should never begin a calculation before you know the answer. It doesn't always work, but this is a good problem to try it on. So with a note like that, let's dive on in. So the statement is, for a point charge moving at constant velocity, calculate the flux integral of E dot dA over the surface of a sphere centered at the present location of the charge. Okay, the field for a constant velocity, kind of saw what was going to happen with this earlier. Uh, Q over 4 pi epsilon naught, 1 minus V squared over C squared, with that factor of 1 minus V squared over C squared, sine squared, and the denominator to the three halves, and then uh, big R hat uh, divided by R squared. Again, R was the difference in velocity, the, the velocity positioning. Um, okay, well, so if that's the case, we want to find this integral. That's uh, by Gauss's law in integral form. The answer has to be Q over epsilon naught. Let's see if this actually holds up. So since we want it at a, with a sphere that is located at the present position of the particle, or the charge rather, we have 0 to 2 pi and 0 to pi for our azimuthal and polar angles. So hence the uh, d theta d phi as our dA in the r hat direction. Notice that the r squares cancel. r hat, big r hat, dotted with big r hat goes to 1. So we're good to go. We notice that most of this stuff is constant so we bring it out front so the q over 4 pi epsilon naught pretty con pretty normal there nothing out the blue and we have that 1 minus v squared over c squared term again constant with respect to the uh the, the differentials uh that phi integral easy enough to split up bring it up bring it outside we've seen that all some uh all book long i'd say all semester this is two semesters um and then we also have the d theta integral which is going to require a little more work so for the theta integral, let u equal cosine theta, then du will equal negative sine theta. And if that's the case, we have that sine squared, which is equal to 1 minus cosine squared, actually goes to 1 minus u squared. Okay. Now the d phi integral goes to 2 pi, and that cancels with the 4 pi in the denominator. But if we were to evaluate the bounds of u, or, yeah, the bounds for u, U of pi is cosine of pi, so that gives us negative 1 in the upper bound. U of 0 is cosine of 0, so that gives us negative or uh, positive 1 in the lower bound. But since on our differential we have to have a negative for the sine uh, d theta to be substituted out, that negative will go into flip in the order of that integral. So that's what we do in the next step. Okay. We also go ahead and factor out a v over c squared to 3 halves on both terms, on all terms rather, to isolate that u. So we just take the v squared, c squared, and factor it out of both of them, send it on through, and that leaves us with the residual c squared over v squared on the original uh, one that was in there. Now that u is left uncovered, we just apply the uh, calculator to it or a table, whatever you want, you know, make it easy on your life. You see that uh, the the squared on the VC cancels with the cube, so that's how we get C over V with the reciprocal. Um, and then just, again, let the calculus work its way through. You see here that once we evaluate the bracket, we're left with 2 over C squared, V squared minus 1, times C over V. Uh, yeah, that's kind of gross. Can't lie. Um, and we see that we get a... a ton of cancellations about to come in so we got to be very careful the twos cancel immediately no big deal there uh now what we see is that if we factored out a v squared or a c squared over v squared in that uh bracket um from the result of the bracket what we see is that we get a one minus v squared over c squared which cancels explicitly with the uh what's next to the q in the numerator and so with that, we now have a term with this C over V cubed times C squared V squared, or in the, in the denominator, C squared V squared times C over V, which, uh, guess what? That turns this uh, C over V cubed 
and then divide it by c cubed over v cubed. Same thing, they cancel out, and we get exactly q over epsilon naught. How freaking cool is that? How consistent is this? These are all great checks to have for ourselves mentally. Oh my goodness, this is so cool.